This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the 13th of March, there's quite a lot of news today so I'm going to go straight into it. So on Friday, uh, sailing yacht A, the 142 meter or 465 feet sail assisted super yacht has been arrested in Trieste in Italy. So she'd been in dry dock there and she'd had some damage sustained while she was on a trip to Iceland uh, last year. Something to do with the masts, I don't know sailing yachts at all, but there was something to do with the boom, was damaged or it crashed down onto the deck or something like this I heard and they were in there getting fixed. The masts had been removed, um, so they weren't able to leave. Now, I had heard some um, from some sources that they were trying to get the vessel ready before these impending sanctions landed, but it was not possible to do so. And as a result, as you can see from the video footage, uh, the police or the, uh, I think it was the Garda Finanza, arrived there uh, and uh, the financial police in Italy and they uh, arrested the vessel. Uh, the owner of the vessel is Andrei Melnichenko and he's unusual in, in the Russian uh, yacht owners because he hasn't, he's never made a secret of the fact that he owns these yachts, right? So he, he had another yacht, Moti Yacht A, which was built in 2008, which we went through in a previous video. And that was, it's a striking yacht. A lot of people say ugly, but you, you never mistake that for any other vessel. She's currently in the Maldives. Um, She's uh, underway in the Maldives, but her AIS has not been broadcasting for three days, pretty much since the uh, the um, sanctions hit. Moti Yacht Lady M, the super yacht that was seized in Imperia uh, last week, uh, sources told me that all the crew were fired on Friday or laid off on Friday. The vessel was seized by authorities uh, as she's owned by Alexei Mordashov, who was placed on the sanctions, the EU sanctions last week. His other vessel, the giant 141 meter uh, or 464 foot Lurson built boat Nord, which looks like an aircraft carrier from the front, has been cruising around the Seychelles in the Indian Ocean. Uh, she has been shedding crew as they prepare to head east to what I've nicknamed the Russian Riviera Vladivostok, uh, which is on the eastern coast of Russia near North Korea, you know, famous holiday hotspot. Uh, the vessel left the, sea sh the Seychelles on the 12th of March for a long journey. She is currently tracking on AIS. So Motiot Solaris has arrived in Montenegro. So if you'll remember in a previous video, we talked about um, the vessel leaving Barcelona uh, quite hastily. And uh, the day after it left, um, the UK government placed sanctions on, uh, on Roman Abramovich. The vessel left uh, Barcelona and steamed up to uh, Tivat in Montenegro. Initially, I thought it would just go there for fuel and then leave again, but it didn't. It's, st it's still there. Uh, it's, at, it's been at anchor for a few days now. I don't know whether they refuel there, but even though Montenegro has made an unprecedented decision to follow suit with EU sanctions, Roman Abramovich is currently only sanctioned by the UK, so he, his boat is quite safe there right now. Is staying with Roman Abramovich. Um, Eclipse, Motiot Eclipse, which was in St. Martin in the Caribbean, and I've been tracking her crossing the Atlantic. She has uh, zoomed across the Atlantic at almost full speed, about 18, 19 knots most of the way. And um, she, uh, I was tracking the whole way. The destination just said cruising, so it wasn't sure where she's, uh, still not sure where she's heading. But uh, she, then she steamed through the Straits of Gibraltar uh, over the weekend um, so, you know, and slowed down a little bit as she went through the Straits, speeded up on the other side. Then she went dark on the AIS, disappeared off the, off the tracking for a few hours today, uh, reappeared, but um, I'm not sure what happened, but the, the AIS was off. And now she's crawling along through the Med doing eight knots. Now. You can see on this image on screen here, you can see there's a dotted line uh, where, where the vessel was not in AI, not transmitting AIS and she came on, back on the other side. She, she is uh, crawling along at eight knots and I think maybe she's low on fuel after that trip. The impressive range though on that vessel because she's gone all the way from the Caribbean straight across the Atlantic, straight through Gibraltar and into the Med still going without refueling as far as I can see. 
All right, next boat is Galactica Supernova. She's been found in Turkey. Uh, the yacht, so this yacht disappeared on the 4th of March and I talked about it on the channel. It came out of Montenegro and just switched off the AIS, disappeared. And I was uh, contacted by somebody, uh, one of the, my sources, one of you guys, uh, 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 somebody who watches the videos, says, hey, I just spotted that boat here, sent me a photograph and the photograph is what you see on the screen. So she is in Turkey. Uh, I checked this morning that she's still there, right? Well, she was still there this morning. Whether she's there right now, uh, I'm not sure, but I, I would imagine she's still there. She's been there for a few days now. Um, the vessel is linked with Vajit Alekparov, who is currently not on a sanctions list, but he, he, he has so far avoided the sanctions, but he is a, uh, the US Treasury lists, lists him as an oligarch close to Putin. Amadea uh, has left Antigua. Now, if you read the backstory of Amadea is that she went dark. She turned off her AIS on the 24th of February, the day the Russians entered Ukraine and started fighting there. Um, and it has not been on AIS ever since. And I, we, one of you guys, again, or a few of you guys actually said, oh, I know where that is. It's in English Bay in Antigua. Sent me some photographs and I showed them in a previous video. Well, she's now left Antigua. She uh, slipped off the key out to anchor, uh, which I was informed about. And then, she, and now she's set off. Now she she is back on AIS now. And she, I've been tracking her, her cruising west towards Panama. Uh, on her track, she actually has a destination on her, um, on her AIS, which says um, uh, Cristobal, which is the, on the Pacific side of Panama. So she's definitely going to go through the Panama Canal. Now, one of the things that I think, the reason why she's turned on her AIS is because to go through the Panama Canal, you must broadcast your AIS. Um, so I think that's probably the reason why they've switched on. I suspect, I'll, I'll place a wager that once it comes out the other side into the Pacific Ocean, um, that's gonna suddenly stop working again. But uh, anyway, congratulations to the ETO who fixed that problem on board. Once she gets into the Pacific, I believe her final destination, I think I believe she's gonna cross the Pacific and I think her final destination is gonna be Vladivostok. Final story, and this one is not being picked up as far as I can tell by any of the mainstream media, most likely because they don't really understand this story. It is a, it is a bit complicated. I will try to keep it as straightforward as possible because it is, it is a big deal. So the Lloyd's Register and the DNV have withdrawn services to all Russian ships. So the Lloyd's Register is a classification society and is best known for the classification and certification of ships and inspects and approves important components and accessories. So that's what they do. The DNV is another classification society, uh, which is actually has a greater piece of the pie when it comes to Russian ships. Um, However, Lloyd's is possibly the largest in the superior industry. Now, what, what is classification? The classification allows the vessel to show to underwriters and insurance that the vessel is in good order. So without the certification, the vessel has effectively been decertified, which means they are no longer in compliance and therefore their insurance is invalid. Um, so that's a big thing, right? So these vessels, they have to have this certificate of class to say that they are complying with all of the regulations. They get one from when they come out of the shipyard. Every five years, they have to have a survey that renews that class certificate. And um, they've Lloyd's have basically said to all of those vessels that are out there that have our certificate, we've decertified that certificate. So a vessel, when it goes into port, it has to, has to send in a lot of information to the port state control every time. And one of the things is to show that you are in class and you have insurance. So a lot of these vessels now, they're gonna really struggle to move around without this. Um, I would imagine they're gonna to have to go to another classification. There is a Russian one. They don't generally want to be in that though um, for many reasons. And I suspect that they will go there just to be able to get a, maybe a temporary certificate because because to become certified with another class, they'd have to have an inspection but I would suspect that the Russian classification society will give them some sort of temporary waiver to allow them to complete their journey. Anyway, 
maybe I'll do another video on that in the future because it is quite complicated, but that is a big deal. So a lot of these the half a billion dollar yachts now might be sailing around with no insurance. So that is a big deal, right? All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. Um, I just want to say one thing that there's a lot of anti-Russian sentiment in the in the comments right now. I understand can't, I understand where it's coming from, but I, I do want to remind people that not every Russian is for the war. In fact, many people in Russia are against the war, and and I just think that we should bear in mind that that the reason the, the main person that we should be mad at is is uh, the person who started the war. Uh, so I just want to say that. And also, thanks very much to everybody who has sent me information, sent me photographs and stuff. I couldn't have, I couldn't do this without you guys. So um, really, thanks very much for that. Um, and to all the new subscribers, I've had um, a lot of subscribers over the last uh, two weeks, um, over 25,000 new subscribers. So welcome to the channel. I hope you go th back through my back catalogue and have a look at some of the, the stuff from more... Um, uh, more uh, pleasant times uh, there's a lot of stuff in there and thanks very much anyway f uh, for joining us and thanks every f for uh, thanks very much for everyone who's uh, who supply who supplied stuff to me um, so keep that up thanks very much I'll catch up with you soon guys all right bye bye